This piece of news is really cool because social engineering attacks and phishing attacks are super, super common. And people don't realize that there are ways to make it look really, really probable so that even a reasonable person might assume that an attack uh, that they are being sent is actually something legitimate. And one of those is vanity URLs. So vanity URLs are, do you, do you know what that means? Yeah, they're essentially short form URLs that can usually be subdomains that are just meant to be easy to remember, like something dot google.com mm -hmm. like docs.google.com is a vanity url yeah so there's a lot of different cloud providers that have vanity url for their services and and what that means is like if i work at uh, veronis which i do then maybe when i get a zoom link it's like you know veronis dot something something dot zoom dot com so my company's name is in there and that allows me to know like oh okay like like in theory, this is a link that is associated with my company. It's with their like corporate account through Zoom or Box or Google or, or whatever. So um, the problem here that Veronis found is really sneaky. So this is an example of a vanity URL, uh, veronis.example.com slash whatever. Um, and uh, a generic version of this would be the app.example.com slash s slash whatever, whatever. So this first one is much more appealing to share with like an employee or somebody else who is expecting to receive something that's part of a company or an organization. But the problem is that you can actually swap out a lot of the, the meat and potatoes of uh, these links and make it look as though it's supposed to be affiliated with a certain group, even though it's not. So let me explain how this works. Um, so actually, if you also want to see a great demo, uh, tall uh, Peleg actually did a great explanation, um, and he's actually the one that, that uh, found this out. So um, vanity URLs are often used in services like Box. So in this case, you can see that, uh, you know, whatever the example is, .box.com is the shared link that we're going to give someone to make them think that, all right, you know, this is officially from whatever this organization is. Uh, the problem is it's possible to swap this out for another company name and have it resolved to the exact same document. So the link still works. So you can go ahead and swap this out and make it look as though um, the person who's receiving this file is actually getting it from a trusted source. And that of course is a problem for any sort of malicious file that might be downloaded to your computer and then do all sorts of bad stuff. So another scenario is um, public file request URLs. Uh, this is something where you can basically create a form uh, and ask for information along with a file. And this could be something that's delivered with a convincing phishing email that says, hey, like in order to register for this company event, like please put uh, this information so that, you know, your company can get you like hotel rooms or flights or whatever. You know, there's lots of different ways you can make a phishing attack based on this. And the problem is it would look as though the box account this is coming from is coming from your company or from your organization. But in reality, it's a vanity URL, which has just been swapped. And this is such a simple technique. It can be applied across a variety of different cloud services like Zoom recordings. Um, so you can sign up uh, in Zoom for a vanity URL as well. So that means you could technically create a meeting, send it with a phishing email, and then have that link look really, really legit. And when people sign up for it, um, you can either record that, that meeting uh, or you know, if you were to hit continue on this, have an entire meeting that's just being recorded by an adversary. So uh, the Zoom webinar registration was also an interesting and novel way of presenting this attack because it shows that if you were to create a Zoom webinar registration URL that requires like a file or something else to be submitted, it would be really, really difficult for the victim to know that this wasn't coming from a legitimate source. So uh, Google Forms is apparently also uh, something that has a problem with this. Uh, this is really across a lot of different cloud services with these URLs because really the the vanity part is not something that the that the service on the back end, the, the server, is really looking at. It's instead looking at the rest of the URL. So that allows some swapping here that from a social engineering perspective is really, really valuable. So uh, there's five separate, uh, sorry, six separate examples of how this could be a problem. So if you want to check this out more, I really like this uh, write up on URL spoofing because it shows how a lot of these cloud services that offer these you know, third party services that are used all over the place by lots of organizations might be vulnerable to having some of these sharing links or interactivity links be hijacked and make it look as though a malicious link is actually coming from within the company. So um, yeah, I, I open these sorts of links all the time. You know, I'll get like a meeting invite or something else. And generally I'll check to make sure the link includes the subdomain of the organization I'm part of or the organization that I'm expecting. And this sort of deception makes it possible for attackers to get around this sort of uh, just quick visual inspection 
and it makes it difficult for them to know whether or not something's really coming from their organization that's using this third-party service. So really incredible research. Um, I was blown away by how effective this is and the fact that it actually still works across a lot of different cloud providers. Uh, Verona's reached out also to all these different providers and let them know about the issue. Most of them fixed it. A lot of them have not. So uh, if you're a security researcher, check this out because it is really interesting how these can be used in social engineering attacks and so many companies interact with these services. It's inevitable that some attacker is probably going to try a phishing campaign or social engineering campaign that uses these sorts of, uh, uh, I guess, decept deceptive tactics. Yeah, I never realized that those vanity URLs or subdomains didn't really mean anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like most people assumed there yeah. was authentication or it was read. Yeah. Nope. Nice.